Good evening, Houston Baptist Church, family and friends. Uh, I'm trying for the third time to make this video. I've had a couple of phone calls that interrupted me, but they were good phone calls. I was glad to get them. Hey, I hope you're doing well tonight. I wanna to give you a couple of uh, announcements and a couple of updates and just share a few minutes with you. I'm gonna to try to be a little more brief tonight. Uh, I wanna recommend that you go over and read Psalm 20. And uh, in Psalm 20, uh, the psalmist is uh, writing to, that being David, writing to Israel and instructing them to keep their eyes upon the Lord. Uh, he's the one where their help comes from. And in that passage, uh, in verse seven, he says, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. And I want you to know uh, that we are the born again. We are redeemed. We belong to the Lord. We belong to God. We are children of the King. And we are not looking to horses and chariots, or are we looking to presidents and governors, CDCs and WHOs? We're looking to the Lord. He's got a plan and purpose, and I believe he's doing something special. And so I want you to remain encouraged as we see things beginning uh, to look like they're going to return to normal. I wanna give you a couple of updates about uh, the next few services. Tomorrow night, we'll be back at six o'clock. That'll be a live stream, and we will be in the book of Philippians, and chapter four, we'll finish that little study. And then next Wednesday, May the 13th, we're gonna start a new study, and uh, I'm calling these walkthrough studies, just kind of the way we did with the book of Philippians. Uh, you know, there's not a lot of alliterations and outlines. It's just reading it, comprehending it, and applying it. And we're going to do that with the book of Esther. Now, I know some people are in the middle of a study in the book of Esther. This will not complicate that. It won't make it any different for you. Uh, we're not using a commentary. We're just going to look through the story uh, contained in the book of Esther, and we're going to see uh, some truths uh, that are spiritual truths that we can apply in such a time as this. I want you to know that Esther, uh, the character Esther, uh, she knows all about the unprecedented challenges of this life, and we're going to look to learn from her and glean some of those truths. And, uh, you know, the things that she experienced had never happened before, and a lot of the things we're experiencing have never happened before. So I believe there's some commonality there and I believe we can learn from that. I wanna tell you that uh, starting on this Sunday, May the 10th, which is Mother's Day, so if I haven't said it yet, happy Mother's Day to all you ladies. Uh, this Sunday, we'll have two worship services. We'll have, the first one will be at nine and the second one at 1045 and we're limiting those services to 60 people. So uh, currently they're about halfway full. There's 34 in one service and 35 in the other service. So I suppose you would say they're a little more than halfway full. So get your reservation in and come on and be a part of these services. And I think that you will get a blessing from them. Uh, also wanna send out a simple thank you uh, to several people that have helped us during this shutdown time. In the book of Thessalonians, the Apostle Paul uh, introducing the epistle, and he says in there that, that he, he is wishing that they would have grace and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. And he makes this statement, we give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers remembering without ceasing your work and faith, uh, your work of faith and labor of love in the sight of Jesus Christ and God our Father. I wanna make uh, that same statement to some people that have been a tremendous help to me during this time. Uh, we think about uh, Robin Harrison, Scott Lance, Mark Whiting, Carla Sexton, Rebecca Williams, and Jonathan Clark, I just want you to know that much of what we've done for the last six or seven weeks would not have been possible without them. Uh, we've had the ability to
to bring together a worship team, and they have been tremendous. They've been spot on. We've had some wonderful worship service, uh, services with just nobody here but us, and I'm so thankful for their help. I'm thankful for Jonathan and Rebecca for the work they've put into the live stream and to, to making those things happen, and they're in there tonight, in fact, working on some of the equipment to enhance our ability there. I'm just so grateful to what they have done, and, and I wanna send them uh, prayers and well wishes, and I wanna encourage you as a church family to do the same. Uh, they're all in your directory. Send them a card of encouragement, of thanks. Uh, let them know that you're praying for them because they have meant the world to me these last few weeks, and, and uh, so grateful that God uh, profited our church with that kind of talent and availability. And so I'm very thankful for that. Also want to mention Angel, uh, our church secretary. She has also been very diligent in a difficult time. I mean, it's, it's quiet around here, guys. Things have slowed down a lot, but she has remained diligent and faithful. I've seen her sweeping floors and cleaning restrooms and emptying trash cans, just keeping herself busy. I'm so thankful for that work ethic and for her dedication and devotion to a job that she does truly as a ministry. And I'm very thankful for that. And then last but not least, I, I don't wanna mention names because I don't want them to have any pressure on them. But a couple of weeks ago, when we saw this thing was going to break and we were gonna be able to resume services, I reached out to several leaders in our church. And they're from different generations. Some of them represent Sunday school. Some of them represent deacons. Some of them represent children. Some of them represent the youth. And, and we put together a committee. And I, I'm so thankful for the work that they've done. Uh, they've helped me in many ways. They've done their own research, their own praying. And they have put uh, conscientious thought into how we should reopen and they have been simply invaluable to me. And I'm grateful for their work. And if you guys are listening, you know who you are. Uh, I can never repay you uh, for standing uh, with me in this time. And, and uh, it was just comforting to know I didn't have to make these decisions alone. <coughs> Pardon me. But I just want to thank you. And uh, I just want to give a shout out to these people that have helped in these difficult times. I know you see me all the time, uh, but uh, I couldn't have done any of the things that we've done here lately without them. And I want you to be thankful for members of the church that have stepped up. I'm going to pray with you and let you go. Hope to see you tomorrow night at six o'clock in Philippians chapter four. Thank you, Lord, for this good day. Thank you, Father, for our church family, for each and every member of our church. Lord, thank you for these that have stepped up to do something special in a time of need. God, I pray your blessings upon them, and I pray, Lord, you'd be uh, honored and glorified and pleased with all that you see. Lord, we love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you soon.